Hey church, it is Pastor Adam. Uh, it's a little bit different today. I'm outdoors. It's been such a nice week this week. I thought we would do a little less formal introduction to what we usually do. Uh, I've been kind of taking a lot of walks in my neighborhood and so I thought it would be kind of cool uh, to spend a little bit of time out here uh, and just talking to you. I know so many of you are worshiping at home and so I just thought I'd say hello to you from my home. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, announcements as we start worship, as we always do. Uh, the big one is that on October the 9th, we are going to be doing an outdoor movie night, kind of a social distance movie night. So at 7 p.m. on October the 9th, which is a Friday evening, we're going to set up our outdoor movie screen. Uh, the missions team is going to be selling uh, snacks and refreshments uh, to raise money for missions. And so if you are in town on the 9th, uh, we'd love to have you just kind of come by, hang out. We're going to do that social distance movie night. It'd be nice to get out of the house a little bit uh, while also remaining safe uh, from COVID. Uh, today, we are doing our new sermon series called Frequency, where we're going to be talking about hearing from God. And so I hope you have come uh, with an open heart and an open mind, ready to hear uh, what God has to say to you today. Uh, if you haven't already, I encourage you to, to say hello in the comments section of this video. If you're on Facebook, you can share it, uh, invite others to come and worship with us. Uh, before we jump in today, we're going to do the thing that we always do, which is that we say the things that unite us here as a church family. So uh, you can say these things uh, wherever you are. You can stand in your living room or your front yard like I am and say them, or you can just meditate on these things in your hearts. It's um, It's been a great and meaningful thing uh, for us to be able to continue to do this together uh, because it reminds us that even though you and I and, and the rest of the community aren't together physically, uh, we are together in spirit. So if you'll join me now. Here at Connect Church, our mission is to connect to God and connect to others. And our vision is to share the transforming power of Christ by creating a community set on making a difference in the world by living out Christ's three greats, the great commandment, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The commandment of great compassion. Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And the great commission. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And while these are the things that unite us here at Connect Church, we are also united with Christians around the world, and so each week we join their voices in saying the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Once again, thank you so much for joining us here at worship today. Um, if you are in your home or your garden or maybe on the road somewhere, I just want you to know that God is with you. Um, and so take a moment, lay aside any anxieties you have, any stress that you have, and just be present with the Lord. And let's see what God does today.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Connect Church Online. I am so glad that you have decided to join us today. We today are starting a new sermon series called Frequency. Um, Frequency is about tuning in to the things that God has to say to us. Um, We are in a world right now that seems to me uh, and to many of you to be a little bit out of control. Nothing is familiar. Everything People keep using the term new normal, uh, but nothing seems normal. Um, Between uh, COVID and and the tensions in the country and just so many different things that seem to be happening happening in so many personal lives, the world is a bit wild. And so today um, we're going to talk about tuning in and hearing from the Lord. Um, It is true 
uh, that it is always important to hear God's voice and, and to tune in to the things that God is trying to speak to us. But in times of uncertainty and struggle, it becomes especially important. And so for the next few weeks, what I want to talk uh, a lot about is, is tuning in. Uh, in. In my truck, I have kind of an old truck that's kind of beat up. That's, that's kind of how I like it. And in my old truck, I've got an old radio, and that radio has an old knob on it that you turn, uh, like you, before they had the, all the electric screens in the, in the cars, that you turn, and you turn that knob to try to find the radio frequency of the station that you want to listen to. And you can get between stations, and you can hear fuzz, or you can go directly to the, to the radio station. And we're going to be talking a lot about uh, that knob uh, for the next few weeks as a metaphor for the way that we are meant to sort of tune in to God's voice and hear the things that God has to say to us. Um, we're also, this uh, sermon series, there's going to be some vocabulary words. Uh, if you're taking notes uh, on the note-taking guide, if you've gotten that online, then uh, there each week, or most of the weeks, are going to have some vocabulary words. And some of these words are words that you're familiar with. Uh, some of them uh, are, are words that you won't be familiar with. Uh, the ones that you're not familiar with will be new theological terms. The one that you are familiar with, you may not be aware, or you may, uh, that these words don't just have uh, regular meanings, they also have sort of theological meanings, things that they mean to Christians. And the reason we're going to do these vocabulary words is because it is very helpful for you and for me uh, to be able to speak the same language as we talk about this process of discernment, about hearing what God has to say to us, about tuning in uh, to God's frequency. And that brings us to our very first vocabulary word, which is Discernment. Uh, discernment is a word that you probably have heard, uh, either in the Christian church or outside of it. Uh, typically, uh, people, when they use the word discernment, they, they, they mean uh, deciding. Uh, but it actually comes uh, from the Greek word, the biblical Greek word, which is diakrisis. And the word actually is more than just deciding. It's more than just weighing the pros and cons and trying to make the best decision with the information that you have. Discernment is about seeking after God's will uh, for whatever it is that we're supposed to be doing. So I, as an individual, am, am out in the world, and I'm trying to make a decision about what God wants what, or what I'm supposed to be doing at, at work, uh, about where I'm supposed to go, uh, what am I supposed to do with my family. And, and the, the word discernment is not about deciding, it's about seeking about discovering what God has for me to do, Dis uh, uh, distinguishing, deciding, judging, making a call to figure out what it is that God wants me to do. So discernment is the first vocabulary word, and discernment is really what frequency is about. It's about tuning in to hearing the direction that God has for us to go. And there are things that you and I can do as followers of Jesus Christ, to try to hear from God more intentionally. I think so often uh, Christians have not uh, reached a place of spiritual maturity where we are able to intentionally hear from God. We sort of walk through life doing the best that we can, trying to make uh, decisions based on the information that we have, trying to do moral and right things, but we never really uh, get the skill to discern, to figure out what it is that God wants us to do and what it is that God does not want us to do. So this becomes especially tricky because typically we are bombarded by voices that compete for our attention, our time, and ultimately our hearts. In the scripture, uh, we see a number of stories, uh, like the story of Adam and Eve. God puts Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and God says, you can do whatever you want, but don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then a snake shows up, and instead of listening uh, to God's voice and what God said to them, Adam and Eve decide to listen to the snake, and they end up uh, eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil because they are not listening uh, to what God wants. We see this uh, continue in the, in the book of Exodus. Uh, Aaron, uh, uh, Moses' right-hand man, has a number of things that he does, and we're going to read a little quick story um, from Exodus 32. So this is after uh, the Israelites have all uh, gone out of Egypt. Uh, they've been freed from slavery. They're, they're moving forward to do the things that God wants them to do. And then Moses goes up on Mount Sinai. He's getting the Ten Commandments. He's spending the time with the Lord. And there at the bottom, the Israelites don't hear from Moses for a while, and they don't hear from God for a while. And so they begin to get very nervous, and that's where we get in Exodus 32. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know where what has happened to him. 
And Aaron answered, Take off the gold earrings that your wives and your sons and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. And so all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. And he took what they handed him and made it into an idol in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. And then they said, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. And when Aaron saw this, he built the altar in front of the calf and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. And so the next day the people rose up early and they sacrificed burnt offering, offerings and presented uh, fellowship offerings. And afterward they sat down to eat and drink and got up and indulged in revelry. Aaron, frankly, knew better. Aaron knew that he was not supposed to be worshiping idols. He was meant to worship God and follow God and do the things that God has asked him to do. But Aaron, like the rest of the Israelites, got afraid. And because he got afraid and began to listen to the frequency or the voice of fear instead of the frequency of God, he made a mistake. And they began to worship at the altar of something that was not the Lord. You and I struggle with this same thing today. Most of us do not worship golden calves, but we do tend to worship other things, and we, more importantly, tend to listen to a frequency that is not God's. We tune in to other voices. Aaron tuned in to the frequency of fear. We have a lot of people in this world who will tell you to do something different. You are constantly bombarded by other people, other voices, other things that want you to do something different, make different priorities, be somewhere that, that, that you're not, care about something that you don't care about, not care about something that you do care about. You will constantly be bombarded with people who want you to listen to them and do the things that they want you to do. This, is, this happens every day in, in the media, happens in our workplaces, happens in our families. There is no shortage of people who want you to hear from from them and tune in to their frequency instead of in to God's frequency. So, some of these people, they're not all bad, right? Some of these people and media outlets and everything else have pure intentions. They're just trying to, to, to advocate for things that they believe to be important. But some things are a little bit more nefarious or, or a little bit more harmful. And so as we talk about tuning into God's frequency, it's also important that we realize that the frequency that we tune into will determine the direction of our lives. You've probably heard the expression, you are what you eat, and in the same way, the frequency that we are mindful of or the people that we listen to or the things that we listen to, those affect not just our bodies but our souls. We say we are what we eat because the things that we eat have a direct and drastic impact on our bodies. Well, the things that we listen to, the people that we are mindful of, have a direct and drastic impact on our souls. So, if we are not intentional, about making sure that we are tuning into God's frequency instead of other frequencies, then we can end up being in a pretty bad spot. Because we can tune into many frequencies that will harm us. There are some things that we can listen to from other people. There are some things that we can listen to that come to us internally that are really, really bad. And so we have to make sure that whatever frequency we tune to is the right one because some of them are really harmful. Uh, Jesus, uh, this isn't just an Old Testament thing. Jesus talked about this in the New Testament in Matthew 15. Uh, Jesus says this about uh, some teachings of the Pharisees. He said, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? And he replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by its roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into the pit." It's a pretty basic yet important lesson from Jesus that we have to make sure that we are listening to the right people. We are listening to the right things. If we tune into a frequency that is not God's frequency, then we get messed up. The Pharisees uh, that Jesus is talking about in this particular day, they were offended because they believed very strongly in the kosher food laws. And Jesus says, it's not so much what goes into your body uh, that defiles you, it's what comes out of your body. It comes out of your body. 
mouth. That's what defiles you. And the Pharisees, obviously, were very upset by this because the religious practice of making sure that you were eating uh, kosher was, was very, very important. And so Jesus sort of condemns this and says, you know, this, that's not what it's about. And then he goes on to say that the Pharisees do not understand. Now, many people of the day were looking at the Pharisees and following them and trying to hear the things uh, that they were supposed to be doing from this particular group of Pharisees. And Jesus says, these guys don't know what they're talking about. And if you tune in, if you tune your spiritual frequency into listening to the things that they're teaching you instead of the things that God actually wants you to hear, then you will end up walking off a cliff. You may have heard the story about uh, there was a guy... And he uh, was a very nice fella, and he came up to an intersection. And there was an older woman there at the intersection getting ready to cross the street. And he said to the woman, uh, could we cross the street together? And the woman was obviously very grateful, and so she grabs on to the arm of, of this man, and they begin to walk across the street. But as they walk across the street, they're zigging and zagging everywhere. Uh, the light is beginning to change. They, they finally barely make it across the street right before a car comes by and almost hits him. And the woman is exasperated, and she looks at the man and says, Why would you do that? Why did you ask me to cross the street? You walked like you're a blind man. You almost killed us both. And the guy said, I am a blind man. That's why I asked you to cross the street with me. So oftentimes, you and I don't recognize that we are supposed to listen to frequencies that are godly, and we get confused about what those are. We follow the lead of someone or something that doesn't necessarily know where it's going, and we get messed up. And so it's important, if we're going to hear from God, it's really, really important that we make uh, a decision that in order for us to tune into God's frequencies, we must tune out other frequencies. A few years ago, I was on a, a road trip uh, through Texas, and as I drove through Texas, I got out into one of those places in Texas where there's a little town, and then there's nothing for many, many, many miles, and then there's a little town. And as I was doing that, I was listening to the radio, as I typically do on a road trip, and as I got a certain distance from a town, uh, the radio station would begin to get a little bit fuzzy. I wouldn't be able to hear the things uh, on the radio as clearly. And then as I kept going, I would get a little bit closer to another town, and I would begin to pick up the, on that same frequency another radio station. And, and what would happen, it was the weirdest thing. I would go, and, and I would hear the radio station that I wanted to hear for a minute really clearly, but then all of a sudden, the other radio station would start playing on top of it, and I was hearing both things at once, and it made it just a jarbled mess. And I couldn't hear the thing that I was supposed to be hearing because there was something else playing on top of it. You and I have to make sure that if we are going to tune in to God's frequency, if we are going to hear from God and, what makes, and, and, and listen to the things that God wants us to make a priority, then we have to tune the rest of that stuff out. And that leads us to vocabulary word number two for today, and that is the word metanoia. Now, metanoia is a, is a Greek word, and it, it's, it's for a deep and lasting conversation of the heart and mind that I encounter God like I never have before. I fall in love with him, and I am ready to give God everything, my job, my tithe, my heart, everything. Metanoia is about deciding, you know what? I want to hear God's frequency and none others. So, uh, for the rest of today, we are going to be talking about things that we can do to sort of tune out, which is the title of, of today's sermon, tune out so that we can tune out the bad frequencies. The frequencies, the other people, the other voices that we hear that are harmful us. We have to, if we're going to hear from God, we have to sort of let this other stuff go. But in order for us to let the other stuff go, we have to have this sort of metanoia experience. We have to fall in love with God so that we decide the things that God is saying to us are more important than the things that the rest of the world is saying to us. And I know that can sound scary, but let me, let me assure you by saying this. God cares for you, and God cares for the people that you care for more than you do. God cares for you and, and the people that you care for more than you can possibly imagine. And so it is only by making the decision of metanoia, having the experience of moving towards God, it is only by doing that will we be able to live fully into who we are and be there for the people in our lives in the way that we are meant to.
If we do not make this decision, if we instead try to listen to all of these different frequencies about what we are and are not supposed to be doing, about who we are and who we are not, then we will get mixed up. And when we get mixed up, we will not be present for the people that need us in the way that we would like to, in the way that God calls us to, in the way that, that realizes the potential of who we're meant to be. And so we have to, in order to tune into God's frequency and hear from God alone, we have to tune out the rest of the stuff. So, for the rest of the day, we're going to talk a little bit about how we can do that. So here we go. We can tune out from harmful frequencies by realizing that we can't do it all. Because sometimes, in order to say yes to what God is calling us to do, we have to say no to certain other things. We have to say no to some things. For, for example, if, if you want to have a, a 40, 50, 60 year healthy, long, wonderful marriage, then the, 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 the husband and the wife have to promise to each other to, to be there for one another, to support one another. And one of the things they have to do is say no to having that sort of intimate relationship with other people. Now, God certainly wants us to love all people. God certainly wants us to be in marriage. And in order for marriage to exist and be what God intended us to be, we have to say no to others. And, and that sort of example extends out to a whole bunch of different parts of our lives and a different parts of our calling. We are, are much more able to say no to the bad frequencies or the harmful frequencies when we realize that in order to say yes to God, we have to say no to these things. And, and that doesn't necessarily mean that all of these things are bad. Many of them are good and righteous, and a good case can be made for all of those things, but, but we are listening to God's frequency, the thing that God wants us to do. And if all of that other stuff is loud and noisy, then, then that's, that's fine, but that's not for us to worry about. Our job, and our only job, is to do the things that God calls us to do. And if God has not called you to do one of these other things, then you don't have to. As a matter of fact, you may have to say no to some other stuff so that you can say yes to tuning into the frequency that God has for you. And this is why our next, import, our next point is so important, is that we can tune out from harmful frequencies by, by discerning between desire and vocation. When I was a kid, uh, like many kids, I got really into superheroes. I found out about Superman and Spider-Man and all that, but I really wanted to be, well, first I wanted to be a Ninja Turtle, but that didn't work out. But then I found out about Batman, and I really wanted to be Batman. Batman was a normal guy. He didn't have any superheroes, but he was really tough. He was a genius. He was a billionaire. He had uh, lots of gadgets and gizmos and a cool costume, and he was just a cool superhero. And so I decided that I really wanted to be Batman. Now, as I grew up a little bit and sort of looked at what being Batman was like, I realized that I didn't want to have a tragic event that would drive me to becoming uh, a super ninja that would, uh, you know, go around beating people up at night. Um, being Batman was a nice idea, but it wasn't what I was called to do. This brings us to vocabulary word number three, and that is the word vocation. Vocation comes from the Latin word vocare, which is also where we get the word vicar. If you're in England, uh, they call preachers vicars. Uh, maybe other places too, I don't know. Uh, but, but vocation is, is more about your job. In, in the U.S., we oftentimes, when somebody says my vocation, what they mean is their profession, the thing that they do uh, to make money. But theologically, uh, and, and in the Latin root, the word vocation is, is what you're called to, what you're summoned to, the thing that God needs you to do and wants you to do, the thing that you are hooked up for. Um, sometimes I read about um, athletes or artists and talking about um, doing their sport, and certainly there's a lot of hard work that, that goes into honing their craft. But when they go out and, and do their sport, it's like the rest of the world fades away. It's, it's what they are meant to do. Right? Same thing with artists. I've heard artists talk about painting, and as they paint, they just can't hear anything else around them because they are so engulfed in the thing that they are meant to be doing. And a few of us are, are lucky enough in the world to, to do something, to have our vocation figured out so we know this is, this is what I was made for. This is the thing that I was supposed to be doing. This is the thing that God calls me to do. So, 
If we are going to tune into God's frequency, if we're going to make sure that we are hearing from God and tuning out all of the other frequencies that might be distracting or prevent us from hearing from God, a really helpful thing is to re- recognize the difference between our vocation and our desire. I like scuba diving. I like to ride my bike. Um, I like to go to the movies. I like all kinds of things. It, it, but all of those things are things that I could give up and my life could go just fine without them. I would be just fine. I, I wouldn't uh, suffer from depression or anxiety. I wouldn't have a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach if I never went and rode my bike again, which I enjoy doing. But my vocation is different. My vocation is the thing that God has driven me to. And, and many of you may not have figured that out yet. You don't know exactly what God has hooked you up for. Um, and, and that's an important process uh, about discernment, and we're going to be talking about how to discover uh, that thing over the next few weeks. But, but it is important to recognize that vocation is different than desire. What I'm made for is different than, than a nice idea. And when I can understand that, when I can understand that all of these other frequencies, while not, they are not all bad, some of them are good ideas, but they're not my vocation. My vocation, the place that God is calling me to, that's the frequency I have to stay tuned in on so that the rest of the stuff can fall into place. And, and one of the ways that's most helpful for us to do that is that we can tune out from competing or harmful frequencies by discovering our gifts, or, or even better, by discovering our spiritual gifts. Uh, years ago, when I was a, a youth minister, one of the, the kids that was coming out of my youth group, um, I thought that he was called into ministry to become a pastor, and he felt like he was called into ministry to become a pastor, but he was kind of a, a shy kid, um, very compassionate and good and just cared for people, and you could see the Lord working in his life, but I was really concerned about him being able to preach. He wasn't much of a public speaker. He didn't like to be up in front of people, and so I began to speak to him. I was like, we got we to gotta work on this. We've got to work on, on, on you getting up in front of people and, and speaking, and I, and I started to work with him. I thought at the time to encourage his call. We, I gotta, we gotta work on your stage fright. We gotta work on you being able to speak in front of people. We gotta work through this. And and I even got him to preach a few times. And frankly, it did not go well. He was not gifted for that. He wasn't hooked up to preach. He didn't like it. He didn't want to do it. He he didn't. Um, and I kept pushing and saying, "This is." what you're called to. We both know that you're called to to the ministry, and so this is something that you have to do in order to serve God in the way that you're called to. It's just going to take a little bit of work. We're going to get there. So, turns out that in that situation, I was the one making the noise. I was the bad frequency. Now, there's nothing wrong with being able to do public speaking and, and speak to other people about the grace and the love of Jesus Christ, but that's not what he was called to. He, today, is a hospital chaplain, and he is an incredible hospital chaplain. He goes room to room, house to house, visiting and praying with the sick and making an incredible impact on, on people's lives as, as they suffer illness and, and, and hardship and helping them deal with the emotional impact of that and giving them God's assurance and grace and presence while, while suffering from, from some physical disabilities. And he does an amazing job. And he eventually figured out that what his spiritual gifts were were aligned with caring for people who were hurting. His spiritual gifts were not about standing in front and, and speaking. And, and here I was over here on a, on a different frequency other than the one that God had telling him that he needed to go over here. I'm a pastor. I'm kind of a mentor to him. And I'm telling him, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. And it took him a while to sort of tune out the noise, a.k.a. me, and tune into the frequency that God had for him to listen to the thing that God had for him, and and it happened by discovering his spiritual gifts. So, one of the things that we can do in order to make sure that we are tuning out the other stuff, one of the things that we can do to make sure we're tuning out the harmful frequencies is to make sure that we understand what our spiritual gifts are, because typically the direction that God is calling us, the frequency that God is speaking to us on, has to do with helping us figure out what our gifts are and how to use them 
uh, in service to the Lord. Uh, if you don't know what your spiritual gifts are yet, uh, then I would encourage you uh, to sort of begin to try to pray through that. Uh, there's a couple of tools that I have available to me uh, that I can help you sort of walk through that process with. So you can get a hold of me and I can help you with that. Um, there's also Disciple Bible Study, which starts here pretty quick as a part of Disciple Bible Study. Um, we talk about discovering each other's spiritual gifts, and so that may be something uh, that you want to get involved in as well. But discovering our spiritual gifts is a really important tool in tuning out uh, the frequencies that we need to tune out so that we can tune in uh, to God's frequency. We can tune out from competing or harmful frequencies by never justifying or rationalizing sin. We started today uh, talking a little bit about Aaron. And Aaron, on the day that he um, made a golden calf, the day that he led the people of Egypt or the people of Israel astray after they left Egypt, was the day in which Aaron decided that something was okay that wasn't. Aaron began to listen to his own fear. Moses was gone. They were out in the middle of the wilderness nowhere. And the reason that the Israelites wanted a, a God to carry them in front of them as they walked was because they wanted someone, something, to keep them safe. They tuned into a frequency of fear instead of the frequency of God and of faith and of hope about what God was going to do for them. You and I, so oftentimes, when we get in the weeds, when we feel alone, as Aaron and the Israelites did, when we feel like the world has lost its marbles, <laughs> like COVID is never going to end, like the, the world is going to destroy itself, when, when we feel like stuff is just overwhelming, for some reason, we begin to think that things are okay when they're not. And I know that's hard, but folks, if, if we're going to be the people that God calls us to be, if we're going to discern what God has to say to us, then we have to make sure that all of that stuff is tuned out. When Aaron did this, bad things happened. When Adam and Eve did this, bad things happened. I could walk through the scripture and I could walk you through my life about every single time that I tune into something that is not God and begin to allow that to determine who I am and what I'm going to do. Every single time it works out bad because God is the one that cares for me and God is the one that cares for you and God is the one with the wisdom and the heart to speak to us and guide us down a path that is a path of hope and grace and love and goodness. I don't know how to convince you of, of this other than just to say it. We have to decide that we want to tune into what God is saying to us, that we want to hear from God and from nothing else. And so for the next few weeks, as I said, we're going to talk about some of those strategies, how we can tune into God's frequency. But the first one is that we've got to decide that we want to listen to God and to tune out everything else. And so this week, I encourage you to spend a little bit of time thinking about how you might be able to tune out some of the stuff that may be distracting you. Maybe your, your radio station isn't coming in clear because there's other radio stations playing on top of it. You're getting some, some interference. How do, you, how do you tune that stuff out and listen to the things that God is speaking to you? Maybe some of the things that, that I said this week resonated you, with you especially. That's because the Holy Spirit may be nudging you and saying, hey, the, what the preacher's saying is about you. Or maybe there's some other way that God has sort of nudged you today to think, you know, I think that maybe I am listening to something that I shouldn't be, whether that's coming from in me or outside of me. I encourage you, family, brothers and sisters, to decide to tune in to what God is saying and to let the rest of the noise fade away. Because if we can do that, the road to peace and to hope, the road that God has for us, we have to make that decision to move towards where God wants us to be. So I challenge and encourage you to tune out the noise, to tune into God, and to move forward together. So I hope you'll join us uh, the next few weeks as we talk about uh, tuning into God's frequency and hearing from His voice. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Hey church, welcome back to uh, my neighborhood. I wanted to say a big thank you for joining us today. I hope the message uh, was a blessing to you as we talk about uh, tuning in uh, to the frequency that God has for us, hearing uh, God's voice. Over the next few weeks, we are going to be talking about that. I know with COVID and everything going on, uh, it's really uh, important for you and I to feel like we know what God wants us to do next uh, when everything seems so confusing. And so I hope you'll join us as we talk about those things. Uh, right now, I'd like to encourage you uh, to click on the link in the description of this video and do your online giving if you have not already. Uh, I know so many of you have been so faithful in continuing to support the church and enabling us uh, to do all the ministries that we do. Uh, and so uh, thank you for doing that. If you haven't done that, uh, I'd like to encourage you to do that now and sort of be a part of what we are doing here at Connect Church. Uh, our community is not a physical location. It is wherever we are and uh, the ministries that we do, all the different places that we are. And so I encourage you now uh, to give and to allow God to bless you as you bless others. at all When the mountains look so big and my faith just seems so small So hold me Jesus cause I'm shaking like a leaf the big king of my glory would you be my prince of so hot inside my soul I swear there must be blisters on my heart so hold me Jesus cause I'm shaking like a leaf the big king of my glory would you be my prince of peace surrender no connection to me I'd rather fight for something I don't really want To take what you give that I need To beat my head against so many walls Falling down, falling on my knees God, please And the Salvation Army band is playing this hymn And your grace rings out so deep Makes my resistance seem so thin. So hold me, Jesus, as I'm shaking like a leaf. The big king of my glory, would you be my prince of peace? So hold me, Jesus, as I'm shaking. One of the things that's been most uh, powerful to me as I sort of uh, have been walking the neighborhood the past week or so in the nice weather is how important it is to remember that, that all of these people that live in all of these houses and, and everywhere that they go, all of these people 
need God. And, and the great thing about Jesus Christ is that he is present um, wherever we are. So uh, you may have been uh, worshiping at home for quite a while now, but that doesn't mean that Jesus Christ can't be present with you. Uh, at Connect Church, our in-person worship right now as we speak uh, is taking Holy Communion. Uh, we have been sending out these small um, uh, single-serving communion cups to those of you uh, who have not been able to worship uh, with us in person. And so if you haven't received those and you'd like to, be sure to let us know and we will send those out to you. Uh, but right now, if you've got bread and juice or, or one of these that we've sent to you, uh, I want to invite you to take a moment and pray with us and uh, receive God's presence. So let us pray. Lord God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and of wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by your blood. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and in your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, now and forever, Almighty Father. Amen. I hope now that you have or are receiving Holy Communion, knowing that God's mysterious presence uh, is with you. And, and when you do that, it's important to me uh, that you know that your sins have been forgiven, that God's presence washes away all of the things that sort of uh, tear us down. And so today, uh, as you go from this place, may you go encouraged, uh, knowing that, that all of your sins have been forgiven, uh, and may you go in peace and know that God goes with you.